Welcome to FutureX, the podcast where we look to solve the variable that is the future of Web3. Every week, we'll talk with some of the brightest minds in the blockchain and Web3 space, from top investors to founders and builders, paving the way for a decentralized world. So what is the future of blockchain? What will Web3 look like in 2050? Let's explore together. Today we have Jerome from Bellacore, uh, one of the core team members. Uh, Jerome, could you tell us a little more about yourself and your background? Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for listening to uh, our talk, everybody. Yeah, uh, I'm, fr- I'm Jerome from Bellacore DEX. Uh, we started as a native DEX for um, uh, ZK Sync era. And we are a basically VE DEX, which means we are distributing our emissions with our votes uh, in decentralized manner. Yep. So uh, we are one of the top DEXs in the case thing, and we are going to uh, expand to a linear chain soon, which is very soon with our version two app, which is totally revolutionized again. Yep. So that will be our brief intro. Nice Great. Meeting. Yeah. Would love to dive more into kind of the details of V2 and what makes you guys unique as a DEX. But before we do that, maybe why don't you tell right. us a little about your personal background? Like, how did you get into the crypto space? You know, how long has it been and what's your journey been like? Yeah, uh, I came into this space around at, uh, 2017, which was the first golden age of Bitcoin, as I see. I started working full time as a solidly a solidity developer when DeFi team arrived at uh, about 2019. Usually, it helped building DAX and yield aggregators, and sometimes worked as a freelance auditor uh, when there were a lot of projects booming in the uh, finance smart chain. At that time, it wasn't a BNB chain; it was BSD actually. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that is my uh, brief background. I think. Uh, what year did you get in? Uh, 2017. Oh, right, right. Right at the, the ICO, ICO boom. Yeah, right. It was a, <laughs> I remember. It was, a fun, it, was, it was a fun time until it wasn't. Yeah, it was a fun time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> many. <laughs> you wasn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, many so got raised, the... many got poor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we'll see, you know, uh, another strong bull market, you know, in the next yeah, year, year or so. Um, so tell me, what, what, what does your like everyday, you know, um, schedule look like in crypto? Yeah, uh, probably maybe same as you guys. Is there such thing as a night and day in the crypto world? <laughs> If I if I try to sleep, there's always a daytime a daytime customer somewhere looking for me on Discord. So like I I barely sleep actually. We are focusing on uh, fixing a lot of UI UX issues with the current uh old V DAXs and making those DAX itself more appealing and keep revolutionizing. Yeah, I completely agree. I think one of the things that's unique about Web three is how globally distributed teams are. Right. And so I think most of us who work in the space are used to taking calls early in the morning, you know, late in the nights, just to catch team members, partners, and even users when they're on. Um, right. It's kind of, you know, I think it's, I, I like it because it's very dynamic, but it also gives you very little chance to kind of shut down. So <laughs> I don't know. It, it's a, you know, it's a fine line. Yeah, it's fine. Um, and before we get into the details of Velocore, you know, there are a lot of people who kind of are still on the sidelines right now, given that it's like a bear market. But I think, you know, as activity picks up, as we see more development in this space, I mean, we're seeing regulators becoming a little more welcoming or at least providing more clarity for digital assets. And, you know, hopefully a Bitcoin ETF will be approved here in the States. And I think as we see kind of some of this progress, more people will want to jump into the crypto industry so for, for those kind of on the sidelines right now, thinking about someday getting into Web3, what can they do today to prepare themselves? Well, I recommend trying out different protocols by bridging multiple chains with really small amounts of money first that you can afford. 
even if there are a lot of protocols, they're all pretty much uh, the same, uh, especially how you use it is pretty much the same. So you'll get, you'll get the hang of it in a week. So, uh, I've seen a lot of people make mistakes and lose lots of money before they've gotten used to it even and lose web free forever after that. So I advise them to really uh, try out everything with, with their affordable money. That's great advice. I mean, I think with you guys and a lot of others, you know, there's no shortage of protocols in the space. So there's so many different options to try out like different mainnets like ZK Sync, Linea, et cetera, to really, I think, you know, the best form of learning is actually using, trying out some of these products. So wow. I appreciate that advice. Right. Best way to uh, learn is actually uh, losing money on it. <laughs> that, that's right. <laughs> you learn it definitely so uh, better better lose small amounts than a lot. <laughs> yeah, we say that you're not truly in crypto if you haven't gone rug before. So that's yeah, just, right. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully you you keep that amount small. Yeah. Cool. So let's now jump into Velocore um, and kind of what makes it unique, how it fits in the broader DeFi and Web3 ecosystem. So I know there are a couple of different components to Velocore. You guys have the DEX, there's a launch pad. Can you kind of walk me through the different you know products you offer and then how you differentiate each one in this market? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh... First, uh, let me start with uh, why we deployed uh, ZK Sync Era uh, instead of other chains. Um, okay. Yeah, for or sure. Is it another question? <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, we actually believe uh, the ZK rollup is technology superior uh, than other uh, options rollup and the right technology to onboard the masses in the future. And ZK Sync is a is a chain that is rapidly developing a number of technologies and including native account abstractions and recently they uh, announced the ZK Stack and many things. We are also interested in other ZK role of chains, uh, but yeah, first uh, that's why we uh, first deployed on this chain and why we chose uh, VE DAX. It is, uh, we wanted to become a liquidity home for uh, many uh, protocols. Many protocols actually maintain their tokens with uh, with their own inflation, but instead of that, uh, they could uh, just put a bribe on our decks and let our uh, let let us support their uh, liquidity with our inflation instead of theirs. So it is more efficient way to uh, make it sustainable uh, ecosystem while you're focusing on your core product. Uh, you don't have to worry about the inflation structure and tokenomics but just focusing on the core product. And we wanted to help them buy our decentralized emission control system. And actually we are in, um, we are in the process of, of revolutionizing it to make more, push for more protocols and users to uh, use it easily. Okay. Um, what was your, like, so going back to deploying on ZK Sync for a second, what was that process like? Because I know, you know, with ZK Sync, it's EVM compatible, but there are different levels of EVM compatibility, right? So there, you know, the, you still have to kind of rework the code a little bit to, to have it kind of fit within the ZK Sync, Sync specs. What was your deployment like? Um, and what's the overall experience deploying on ZK Sync been like? Yeah, actually it wasn't that easy. <laughs> We, we also uh, had many problems uh, at the beginning. And actually, uh, you, I'm sure you've seen the gem top happening <laughs> that, that locked up lots of Ethereum into their contract. Uh, so yeah, that is, uh, it, it is a EVM non-compatible, but also that's why uh, we had the competitiveness because uh, we were able to deploy uh, on ZK Sync while other uh, competitors other competitors are just uh, working onto the EVM compatible chain. Yeah, uh, we did it because we can. <laughs> and that was a great success. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, the logic, be uh, logic behind the decision and the uh, the beginning era of the education era. 
Got it. And you mentioned you're also deploying on Linea, right? Yeah, right. And for those of yeah. you who of you who are now familiar, Linea is the new L2 by the consensus team, the team behind MetaMask. Um, can you tell tell us a little more about why you decided to go to Linea next versus any other EVM compatible L2, like let's say an Arbitrum or an Optimism? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, we've introduced uh, to Linea by our uh, current partner, Mendy Finance, which is the lending powerful Linea. And uh, we, I was very shocked. Uh, it, a Linea chain has a good backer. Consensus is one of the biggest company in Web3, and they're making their own chain, and it has a future TG plan. And then I didn't know about Linea till then. Then uh, when I found out, I was really startled. And I, I'm really uh, actually hyped on the chain too. If you turn on your MetaMask, uh, Linea chain is actually the second default chain on, on the MetaMask, which is the basic wallet that everybody uses on Web3. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're also pr preparing for the huge marketing uh, in the next upcoming week. Upcoming week. So it'll be really huge. I, I think uh, that if I choose top two chains uh, that'll that'll be most successful in ZK uh, ZK rollup area, that that two will be ZK Sync and Linea. That's my third. And of course, it, it could be wrong. And of course, uh, optimism optimism rollup chains could win in the future. But yeah, that's my uh, third. Uh, if billion users on board. Optimus rollup wouldn't gonna uh, make it uh, because of the scaling issue that give rollup can. So yeah, that would be uh, that's my future view on the linear. Got it. So you think for to enable the future kind of mainstream adoption, zk rollups are gonna beat out optimistic rollups. Yeah, actually, uh, not all. It, it is not the case that uh, good technology wins always, but uh, but generally we believe it does. <laughs> so yeah, I'm on it. Awesome. Okay. Um, so let's get back to Bellacore, the product, for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. you you know, Bellacore de described as a self-optimizing DEX, right? Can you tell me a little bit more about what that means? What what is self optimizing? Yeah, self optimizing is uh, what I described right before. It is a, uh, a distribution mechanism controlled by votes. So uh, usually, like Pancake Sub or Sushi Sub, centralized organization at uh, company redirects their emission to every pool, and they they are the one who decide uh, uh, which partner they uh, they give the emission. But uh, in Velocore, it's not the case. Uh, if you if you just created a new token and you want to give a uh, bootstrap uh, liquidity on the deck, uh, you could just add a, a bribe on on the new pair. It, it doesn't have to be big. Actually, if you K uh, as a beginning, it would, uh, would gather enough. Uh, so that is the uh, auto control and auto uh, self optimizing mechanism of the VE deck. Yeah, that sounds like a, a, a crucial feature as we talk about like decentralization, right? Because you mentioned yeah. these other DEXs, there's still like a centralized component, you know, it requires the team's intervention, which, you know, I, I think yeah. all projects are at different levels of decentralization right now, but I think the ultimate yeah. goal is to get to full decentralization. And we'll, if we're going to do that, you're going to need functions like self-optimization that you described. Yeah, right. Um, so let's talk a little more about the efficiency in Velocore. What are some of the ways Velocore addresses issues Dex face in this space? Like, you know, transaction costs, slippage, and just, you know, overall challenges of liquidity. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, this is what we are, what we were focusing uh, from right from the beginning. And uh, these are the improvements we've, we've been most focused on uh, since we launched in early April. And we detailed uh, 
Uh, actually, we uh, recently released a medium article about uh, 26 revolution we've uh, made on version two. Uh, yeah, it was just released yesterday, actually. So if you're interested, uh, you can go and check it out. But first of all, as I said, uh, both ZK Sync and Linea are uh, currently quite expensive in terms of gas fee. So if you consider that, uh, uh, that the average user swap size around uh, only around about hundred dollars per transaction. Even a, a one dollar reduction in gas cost reduces the price impact by one percent, practically, mm -hmm. which is the difference that no amount of a concentra con concentrated liquidity can overcome. One percent is really big. Uh, we borrowed a concept of uh, the balance protocol and made our own uh, original contract extremely efficient. Achieving gas saving is of uh, fifty percent to ninety percent compared to other DEXs. Actually, all other DEXs we've uh, prepared all of them. Both bribe, uh, bribe reward uh, involves a lot of claims and token transfers, which is very expensive. And being able to put them all in one transaction with the with the most efficient mechanism. Uh, makes it uh, makes Bell for version two the most efficient system in existing. So does that mean users can expect kind of lower transaction cost using Bellacore compared to like other comparable DEXs? Yeah, that's right. Actually, uh, we've uh, written a benchmark that we've tested on uh, several several other DEXs. We didn't specify the name, but uh, we've actually tried every uh, DEXs and made a transaction like uh, swapping Ethereum to USDC, adding liquidity. If there's a, a reward claiming process, uh, uh, like reward, getting a claim reward, all the uh, we've written a benchmark on that on our DAO, uh, so you could go and see how much we've saved compared to them. And especially when you're uh, when you bought a lot on the DEX. For example, uh, we uh, we usually bought on seven to eight pairs per week, currently on V2. Then you get about uh, 20, 20, uh, 20 tokens <laughs> as a reward because uh, every protocol gives a different reward. So uh, if you uh, claim it one by one and like uh, if you compound it, it costs like uh, 20 transactions and lots of gas fee. But uh, on version two, you could do it in one click. You don't have to even uh, claim each one. It it just uh, claims and swaps into the token you want to compound in one click. This is very easy and uh, efficient process. And how are you guys able to do that? Are you guys leveraging the native account abstraction of zk Sync? Ah, no, that's that's the point. Uh, we made a native ZAP in our contract. Uh, our contract, for example, if you're using the Uniswap, uh, router accepts only one uh, one transaction, one swap transaction actually. But in uh, on our version two, we can accept uh, multiple multiple swaps at once, multiple actually executions uh, at once. For example, you could uh, swap add liquidity and swap another token and like uh, adding add, add, uh, taking to the gauge. At one transaction with uh, bet, uh, betting it into one transaction. Uh, this is a really uh, easy process. And uh, yeah, it saves a lot of gas. Uh, that's great. I think, even in, in addition to saving gas, it's all about streamlining the user experience, right? Which right. I think Web3 has a big challenge with that. You know, what we see in Web2 is everyone's optimizing to to streamline it to as few steps as possible for the users. I, I, you know, I think things like what you guys are doing and just like account abstraction in general kind of helps us get closer right. to that, but we still, we still have a lot of work to do. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm also familiar, a little familiar with, with your voting and reward system. And I know it's, you guys are taking a pretty unique approach to it. Can you kind of, ex you know, explain for the audience what, how you guys approach um, voting and rewards at Velocor? Yeah, uh, in the current version one system, uh, it, it is quite similar to the current Velocor. Uh, emissions are adjusted to each pool through weekly voting, a system that turns the flywheel by balancing bribes and rewards. But uh, this required uh, both drivers and voters to vote repeatedly every week. 
And with if you have a multiple NFTs, it's a, a lot of work, uh, repeated work, both in terms of gas and time. Uh, for the border, uh, there were too many things considered to make a rational choice, especially. Uh, you have to uh, see the, the different drives and calculate their uh, values, and or you see the APRs, and there are lots of tools. Uh, so you have to uh, think, uh, in what way I could distribute my vote um, uh, widely. Uh, and it, it keeps changing uh, time to time before the effort ends. So it is quite hard to hard for you to make the optimal choice. But in version two, we solved all of these incumbences. Uh, we we removed the effort so you don't have to worry that uh, vote counts, uh, there will be a whale vote at the last minute or uh, uh, the broad uh, yeah, uh, you don't you don't have to worry about other people are voting on your at the right at right last minute so that you don't you get much less than you expect it. Uh, but in version two, we remove the effort so it is continuous uh, taking this time. So if your pool uh, gets lower APR because uh, a whale came in, you can just leave and uh, vote on another high APR pool. Actually, we made this process very easy with the smart voting system. Uh, you just click the smart vote button. We just we calculate all the things considering TVLs and APRs and your vote count. We distribute it in the optimized way. So, so all you have to do in vote is click uh, enter the vote page, click smart vote, and cast vote and send the transaction. That's all. Uh, that's all. The, all you work um, in a, in every time you come in. And also uh, claiming reward, as I said earlier, you could do it in all click and uh, finish everything, uh, every work. Uh, yeah, uh, so it is very uh, great system for users, uh, but it's also great for projects. Uh, uh, those inefficiency doesn't only affect users, but also a lot of projects. They don't, they didn't get fair share of their uh, emissions since both were uh, not distributed widely. So uh, some some projects uh, added a lot of rights, but actually voters didn't realize that there were a lot of rights on them. So they didn't vote on them and that they, they got much less emission they deserve. But in V2, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the kind of situation since every vote will be distributed uh, up very wisely uh, due to the continuous system. So it ensures that drivers don't go to waste and um, that they get their fair share of emissions always. That's great. It's a very unique approach that you guys are taking. Um, so with, you know, I, V2 is like this major upgrade for you guys. Is there any information that you guys can share about maybe what's coming up through the end of the year, like a little bit about your roadmap. I know, you know, uh, you have Linea soon. Is there any other kind of features, products that you guys plan to explore um, from now until maybe, you know, the end of the year yeah. or early next year? Yeah, actually, uh, there's another big thing coming uh, on our side. Uh, it's export system. Actually, um, many uh, many of the chains we are going. Uh, has a plan for TGE and airdrop plan for the early contributor uh, users. And also they are distributing, distributing their tokens to the ecosystem protocol. And we made a promise that we're gonna share 50% of the airdrop to the user. And how are we gonna distribute it? Uh, using the passport system. We made uh, the passport system to measure uh, numerically users contributions uh, uh, in five major criteria, including adding liquidity, a swap, and like uh, using our ecosystem partners and acquiring some uh, NFTs. And what we're focusing on is this uh, ecosystem partner part. We are sharing our share of airdrop for uh, by uh, for users that use our uh, core partners in the ecosystem. Yeah, uh, so we are. We want to redirect our users and uh, redirect our users' money into our also to our ecosystem partners. Uh, so uh, our ecosystem partners could designate a one on-chain quest, and uh, we and users uh, 
to clear the quest, get a stamp on our passport. Like you, like you get a stamp if you go, uh, if you cross border uh, on another country. So uh, yeah, uh, we want to grow together with our ecosystem partners. So uh, those uh, passport system is on uh, on our work, and actually we've just deployed the uh, prototype version of the passport into the test linear testament now. But we're going to expand it to several other chains, um, and if our partners come along uh, with us to other chain, they'll also get uh, uh, get uh, get the same password uh, tank. So yeah, uh, that is one another big thing we are uh, cooking now. That's great. So users who kind of interact with Velocore could potentially not only qualify for airdrops directly from let's say ZK Sync and Linea for interacting with the, the, the ZK Sync mainnet and then the Linea mainnet when that's ready, uh, but yeah. also they'll qualify for a share of the airdrop that you guys will receive as a, as a yeah. ecosystem partner. That's right. That's awesome. Because I, I remember Arbitrum did that very well too uh, when they launched their token. They distributed tokens to all of the ecosystem protocols and yeah. all the ecosystem protocols were uh, distributed to their early users. So I think it's like a double benefit for users. Yeah, right. But actually in the Arbitrum, many protocols didn't share it with the users. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's <laughs> that. You know, they were. Yeah. I think the intention by Arbitrum was to have them distributed to their yeah uh, to the to the DAO DAO uh, participants, yeah. right? Yeah, but actually, uh, it wasn't expected. So many protocols uh, didn't make that promise before, so they didn't have to. That's why we are uh, we are making those promise uh, before we get uh, something. That's great. Cool. Well, it definitely seems like a no-brainer to try out Velocore as a way to also get some exposure to like ZK Sync and Linea. Um, yeah. Now, shifting topics a bit, what are your current thoughts on the regulatory environment right now? You know, has that impacted you guys in any way? I mean, it obviously has a macro impact on just the crypto market in general, right? Um, some of the volatility and the prices. Um, yeah, and definitely yeah, the absolutely. centralized services, but how, you know, how do you guys see the current regulatory environment and then how has it affected you guys? Yeah, uh, actually regulation is a big issue, especially for the adult, uh, protocols based on America, especially. Uh, the, uh, those, uh, those protocols who are based in USA uh, should be, uh, uh, should face a serious danger in the future. And I don't know what the future holds exactly, but uh, yeah, that's for sure. And I think it would be better to incorporate and build a foundation in countries with weaker regulations, uh, such as Singapore or Dubai, or there are many uh, countries that are that have a weaker regulation regarding crypto. And for us, especially, we are quite, uh, Quite decentralized as a V deck uh, compared to other DEXs. So I think we are one step uh, behind uh, uh, the, the other protocols. So we'll have pretty much time to prepare if uh, that comes to the real threat in the future. Yeah, I think to your point, yeah, even though the US is still a very challenging regulatory environment, other countries are stepping up and kind of filling the, the gap, right? Yeah. So you mentioned right. Singapore. Singapore has historically been, um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily crypto friendly, but they've been accommodating and they've made yeah. the effort <laughs> to define what digital assets are. Hong Kong is following suit right now. Um, even Japan is starting to re-embrace crypto again in some way. So I do think this is the future and hopefully the U.S. will catch up. Um, you know, even the EU has passed the MICA. Um, regulation, which again, it's, you know, it's not good for all forms of crypto, but it, it's better to have clarity than not to have it. Right. Right. Um, I think, um, but I, I think uh, yeah. in, in the future, there would be a different form of uh, DeFi that fits into regulation, but you know, regulation is different on 
each country. So it may not be that global if uh, if if they fit into certain countries' regulations. Yeah, I think that's the big challenge, right? If DeFi yeah. is completely borderless, how do you operate in all these different markets, which each have their own kind of regulatory requirement? You know, right. can you become a truly decentralized product if you have to follow the regulation of every single country where your users are? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge. And I think the bigger challenge is, you know, regulators and lawmakers, they barely understand crypto as it is. So for them to understand DeFi, you know, is a, it's a very challenging task, right? So I think that's the reason a lot of regulators, they look at DeFi and say, let's just regulate it the same as CeFi, which I think is completely the wrong approach. But for them, it's it, you know it's the easiest path forward. Right. I think that's the exact description of the situation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool, so I guess let's go into some forward looking things. Um, so we're currently in a bear market right now. I mean, it doesn't really feel like a bear market sometimes, right? Because <laughs> yeah, I think the bear market goes has, so long. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I think if we are at the low of the bear market, I'm very happy. I'll take this for what it is because it's been much worse in other bear markets. Yeah. Um, I think it's been surprisingly resilient. So during a down market, everyone's focusing on like building, you know, it's they say it's the builder's market right now. As the market starts to kind of pick up, what are you guys focused on? Yeah, uh, actually, we all experience several times that when the fire comes, uh, when the bull market comes, uh, gas price gas price will skyrocket and transaction will get a lot of pending, and that means a lot of costs in DeFi. Uh, especially uh, when you do the swap, you have to pay like ten dollars and twenty dollars maybe in Ethereum. So. Uh, before before the time comes, we're gonna make our deck very active, more efficient. Uh, we're we're keep upgrading our uh, contracts to uh, be efficient. Uh, actually, we're not a proxy, but uh, we have a plan to uh, upgrade our uh, deck another time uh, to maybe to version three in the future. So we are making a uh, efficient deck system before full market comes. And until then, I will continue to evolve and focus on being the best deck with low sleepies, low transaction codes, and especially easy to use UI, which is very important for the normal users that aren't very used to the product. products. Yeah, that's, I think that's a great point that you make about the gas fees. Um, yeah, some people get, complain about the gas fees now, but Imagine what happens when things pick <laughs> back up. People are, you know, aping yeah. into NFTs, you know, meme <laughs> coins. I yeah. remember back in 2021 when it was like the boom, the NFT market boom. I was paying, you know, up to a hundred dollars a transaction. Yeah. Right, and actually, you don't have to go back to go that back. Uh, you can just remember uh, Pepe and Mil Bilotti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> you can think what's crazy at that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I, I think yeah, you we'll, guys we'll, are, yeah, yeah, you guys are definitely, you know, solving the right problems with, you know, preparing for like the next uh, up market, right? Yeah. Um, in terms of like individual sectors, are there any kind of like that you think are promising as we get into the next bull market? And then, are there any that you think are like overhyped right now? Uh, well, actually, for now. Uh, mean tokens are uh, overhyped, definitely. <laughs> it is actually always overhyped since it has no real value. But uh, yeah, so if regulatory uh, comes more and more, they're going to ban on those kind of things. Maybe, uh, maybe not. I hope not, but uh, they're real. And uh, historically, uh, in all financial products, uh, mo uh, more. Uh, leverage products get more volume than the spot project, uh, like two times uh, in average. So I think uh, perfect access and options, maybe not often uh, in terms of volume, but 
FERPA and future DEXs will get a lot of volume and hype. So I'm sure that's why you're making uh, in future. So, and, uh, the, and there will be a lot of things to uh, do together with spot DEXs and future, uh, future DEXs, such as uh, margin trading. That is actually a lending for spot, but you could make a, a structured product combining those all three products Hot margin futures and even options to like uh, make a IL hedging and product like that. So yeah, uh, I think more and more uh, uh, financial products from the trap by uh, will come to DeFi and make a more stabilized and complex product for uh, to make users uh, enjoy safe trading environments. Maybe a uh, leverage environment, but <laughs> yes, uh, both safe and uh, fun. Great answer. Um, so, just one more question before we wrap this up. Yep. So, in your in your perspective, what does true Web three adoption look like? You know, imagine it's ten, fifteen, twenty years from now, and we fully embrace this decentralized, you know, manifesto, what does the future look like to you? Yeah, it is really a hard question. <laughs> uh, I'm not a, a future telling person, but what I realized at uh, InterCC Paris uh, last week was that uh, the convenient finance that I hadn't uh, felt while living in developed uh, countries is not as much of a global infrastructure as I thought. Um, even in developed countries, uh, financial transactions between countries and um, sending money to another country are very complicated and require expensive uh, trust codes. And I like to see a future where many of these problems are solved through blockchain technology and DeFi. Especially, uh, I mean, specifically, I want to experience the future that I don't have to change my currency in order to go Paris. <laughs> I, I want a future that uh, I, I don't have to worry about anything when I uh, financially, when I go to uh, go abroad and I could just pay uh, with the same, uh, same crypto uh, transfer method without, uh, with much less or without gas fee, uh, without, uh, without holding credit card or Without uh, without uh, grabbing cashes and and be of, uh, be scared of pickpocketing <laughs> in some countries, yeah, that would be the uh, new future. Uh, I think I want to see. Yeah, that uh, that's a great point. Like I was just thinking about how I have a when you mentioned like you want to travel without changing into other currency. I have a backpack yeah. that I travel with, and in the backpack I keep local currencies because I'm always too uh, lazy to, <laughs> to to swap it back when I get back home. And so yeah. in my backpack I have currency, <laughs> a, a whole lot of currency from maybe at least six, seven, eight different countries right now. Wow! Uh, and one day I'll take it and I'll go transfer it out. But in my mind, I'll just keep it until I go back to that country. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you cannot even find the right coin. <laughs> exactly. Okay, cool. Well, Jerome, thanks so much for being here today. Um, yeah. Really enjoyed fine. the conversation. If anyone Thank wants you. to kind of follow along the Velocor journey, journey, try out some of the products, you know, where should they visit? Yep, uh, you could always access to velocor.xyz. Then uh, you could choose uh, whichever chain you wanna uh, wanna grow, and or you can directly access our app through app.velocor.xyz. Awesome. Um, you know, certainly we at Seen Futures look forward to continuing to partnering together in the zk Sync ecosystem and you know, potentially other ecosystems as well, because we're also multi-chain. We're always looking, assessing different kind of L1s and L2s to uh, expand to. So uh, thanks so, so much again for being here. And um, yeah, hope everyone enjoyed this conversation. Yeah, thanks for the time, Mark. And uh, thanks for the time, everyone listening to this.
Thanks for listening to the Future X podcast. Subscribe on Spotify or wherever you're listening to this episode.